present and past presidents of the three academies and friends. <clears throat> Let me first thank the academy for arranging this felicitation function. Many kind things were said about me, for that I am grateful. Professor Mukunda, who was the chairman of the Science Education Panel in 2000, asked me to develop a refresher course in experimental physics to improve the lab practice in colleges. I accepted to do so and decided to put in my best efforts to justify his confidence in me. There are good institutions like IITs, IISCRs, IISC, which are blessed with highly qualified faculty. They have resources available to import very good equipment from abroad for student experiments. The students of these institutions are very fortunate. But the majority of the students study in state universities and colleges which cannot afford to import costly equipment. This is one of the reasons why the curricula at BSc and MSc physics levels in universities are highly skewed in favor of theory at the expense of experiments. Students in colleges do outdated experiments with ancient equipment. They are not convinced that theory and experiment go together. This imbalance needs to be corrected. The sooner it is done, the better it will be for physics education. One of the ways the Academy has attempted to do this is to start the refresher course in experimental physics. But I think there is a need also to conduct maybe three-day lecture programs on how to design experiments. And I told Dr. Sundar that he should pursue this matter with the academy. I set myself the following aims in developing the course. Firstly, the experiments must be low cost so that colleges can afford to buy them <coughs> and must take advantage of improvements in measurement techniques brought about by electronics. Secondly, each experiment must illustrate a physical principle or validate a physical law. The experiments must be easy to do and the theory behind each experiment must be explained clearly in a manual. The experiments must be time-saving so that more than one experiment could be done in a laboratory session. I felt that I needed to take the help of a young, energetic and committed faculty member of a physics department in this endeavor. I was looking for such a person but could not find anyone. Then the late Dr. K. R. Rao of BRC, who was my close friend, attended a DAE symposium in Goa. On his return, he told me that Dr. Priyalkar of Goa University was exactly the type of person I was looking for and he asked me to contact Dr. Priyalkar. I wrote to Dr. Priyalkar and he immediately agreed to help me in this effort. This was the most important contribution made by Dr. K. R. Rao, which ensured the success of the refreshing course. I wish he were alive and he were present at this meeting. Dr. Priyalkar not only responded to my <coughs> request immediately, but he also wrote me two of his colleagues, Professor Sadik and Professor Disa. 
Later, Mr. Manohar Naik joined this group. Till 2007, these were the resource persons in all the courses wherever they were conducted. Professor Sadiq and Professor Tisa built some of the early electronic equipment which was used <coughs> in the experiments in the course. In these early courses, we wanted each participant to wire three circuits, test them, and take it with, with them back to their institution. My Goa colleagues brought all the printed circuit boards and electronic components, traveling by train with heavy baggage. But for the unflagging support I received from my Goa colleagues over a period of seven to eight years, the attempt at developing this course would have floundered. Their contribution in the development of this course was great. <laughs> Professor Mukundar, Chairman of Science Education Panel, and Sri Madhavan, Coordinator of Science Education Program, gave me full support till they retired. I suggested that for the conduct of the refresher course in experimental physics, such as some separate provisions in the rules should be made as conducting an experimental course is at a different level of complexity from conducting a theoretical course. They accepted all my suggestions. Professor Sebastian, who succeeded Professor Mukunda, and Dr. Mahabaleshwar, who succeeded Sri Madhavan, they have been kind enough to extend the same level of support to me as in the past. I acknowledge with gratitude the help and support I have received from Professor Mukunda, Professor Sebastian, Sri Madhavan, and Dr. Mahabaleshwar. In 2010, Professor A.K. Sooth, then President of the Indian Academy of Sciences, was gracious enough to allot the fourth floor of the Summer Fellows Residency in Jalahalli to build a lab for me so that I could conduct courses in Bangalore. Professor Sooth has always been supportive of this program and has made many appreciative comments about the course from time to time. The current president, Professor Ramaswamy, recently sanctioned a grant of rupees 4 lakhs for me to buy a spectrogram and an electromagnet to develop experiments in luminescence and in GMR materials. I thank him for this time. I want to express my appreciation for the help received from C.S. Ravi Kumar of the Academy in seeing that my design for the laboratory in Jalahalli and for the furniture at the laboratory was faithfully carried out and for procuring some equipment. Whenever a course is held in Bangalore, Ms. Gita, who is here, looks after all matters from receiving applications for the course down to organizing the registration material with meticulous efficiency. I thank her for her help. I thank Sri Shalvamani and Sri Venkatsatnam for making, for making arrangements for my travel, the account section for their help in financial transactions, and Sri Rajesh, Gagadaraya, Ravi, and Nagesha for their help in Jalali when a course is run. In 2010, Dr. Ramesh joined me. He brought with him a wealth of experience in experiments. His lectures are noted for their clarity. He contributed new experiments and improved some of the electronic circuits. The material science course is his brainchild. And this course started in 2014 
has also proved to be immensely successful. I am very happy that Dr. Sundar Samajikar has taken over the responsibility of running the experimental physics course. He is an outstanding scientist and is keenly interested in pushing this program forward. He has many good ideas and I am confident that this course will reach greater heights under his guidance. I want to thank the director of RR CAP who agreed to give a closed cycle refrigerator and long term loan to me so that we could do experiments down to 20 Kelvin. Over a period of time, I have built a network of faculty members who would serve as resource persons in the refresher courses. Dr. Sarmishta Sahu who spoke some time ago, and Dr. Gunan Nawar, who is here, and Dr. Sarbari Bhattacharya have helped us in many courses in Bangalore. Like them, I have nearly 25 teachers spread all over India who come to help me when I conduct a course in Bangalore. I am very grateful for their help. Ajay sensors and instruments manufacture the equipment designed by my co colleagues, Dr. Ramesh and me. Mr. Vrishabhendra is present here. <laughs> he has so far sold more than 250 kits to about 150 institutions in the country which are using these experiments. I want to thank Mr. Vrishabhendra and Mr. Rajay Kumar for giving out a bit of good quality and for all the help they provide me whenever I make a demand on them. Thus you see that the credit for the success of this course has to be shared by so many people. I could not have done anything by myself alone. So I will take this felicitation not as a felicitation to me, but as an appreciation of the contribution of all the people who have helped me in developing this course. I would now like to crave your indulgence for some reminiscences. At my age of 85, I often look back and I can discern a few people who have exerted a great influence on me and shaped my life. First, my parents provided a very happy and affectionate home for all of us, their children. We imbibed a set of good values from them. By example, they showed us that one must put 100% effort to ensure success of any responsibility one undertakes. This sense of commitment is strongly imbibed by my brother, by my sisters, and myself. We are a very close-knit family, and I have received a lot of affection from my brother and my sisters. When I joined IISC to do my PhD in 1951, I was 20 years old. I had some knowledge of physics, but I knew little else. In IISC, I met Mani and Whitey, with whom I developed close friendship. Mani was one year senior to me, and Whitey was my batchmate, who later married my sister, who is here. I found that their knowledge of physics was much more extensive, and they knew many things besides physics. Mani was Vakanti Subramanian who later became a professor in the physics department of Indian Institute of Science. Whitey was Whitey Tatachari. He worked with Professor Jair Ramchandran and later spent his working life in USA, in MIT and Stanford. Whitey was very versatile. At that young age, he had a deep knowledge of Sanskrit and philosophy. 
he could draw and paint very well and he could talk very knowledgeably about literature, art and music. I realized how shallow my knowledge was and tried to rectify this defect by reading voraciously on all topics. The IISC is a great institution. It developed my self-confidence and it made me what I am today. In IIT Madras, I had an extraordinary colleague in Professor V. Balakrishnan. Still later, I met Professor Mukunda and in a different context, I have worked with him for 20 years. I developed great admiration for Professor Balakrishnan and Professor Mukunda because they are exceptionally good teachers. I learned many things from them. <coughs> My wife, Radha, trained to be an artist in Karachatra. She is very talented in traditional painting. <laughs> if she had made a career as an artist, she would have earned a name for herself. But she preferred to take care of the children and the family so that I could be left undisturbed to pursue my interests. She has been very patient and very supportive during 23 years of, of our married life. I can say honestly <laughs> that whatever success I have achieved is entirely due to her affectionate support. It is not enough to work hard and to be committed. One also needs good luck. And that I had in plenty all my life. I had excellent colleagues in IIT when I was developing low temperature activities there. In IUC Indore, Professor Siddheshwar Lal, who was in charge of administration, was a colleague who was very efficient in administrative matters. So, I left all administration to him and concentrated on developing the academic activities there. In RRI, I had the good fortune to work with Professor Emma Ramachandran, Meena and Dr. Antal Narayanan in developing laser cooling of atoms. I also enjoyed good health. In the nearly 80 courses I have conducted over the last 16 years, I never missed a single session. <laughs> As this good luck and good health, I have to thank the Almighty. My hearing loss is very severe now and I get very tired traveling. So I will now be commuting, commuting only between Bangalore and Mysore. My son and daughter-in-law, they work in Bangalore and I have an adorable granddaughter. <laughs> Whenever I come to Bangalore, I would like to spend a few days in the lab in Chalahari to develop new experiments. I want to be doing something useful. Once again, I thank the Academy for arranging this felicitation. And I thank all the people who said gracious things about me. Let me tell you, I have not done anything great because my abilities are very limited. But within my limitations, I have done a few useful things and I have enjoyed doing what I did. I cannot ask for more. Thank you very much.